Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our event on Google Workspace change management and adoption best practices. My name is Lauren, and I'm the content manager for the Google Cloud community. And joining us today are Google Workspace consultants, Gretchen and Laura, as well as Senior Director of Product Management at ActiveTrack, Omri Goldstrom, who will be leading the session content and answering your questions today. Questions are encouraged, so please feel free to add those into the YouTube chat box, and we'll be sure to get to them either in the chat or at the end of the presentation. And we do have a few pre-submitted questions that we'll cover as well. For any questions that we don't get to, please share them in the Google Workspace community, and someone from the community or the Workspace team will be happy to help you out. And there are links to the community in the YouTube description, and we'll also drop it into the chat. All right, with that, uh, it's great to see everyone joining us in the chat from the UK, Colorado, Spain. We love to see where you're joining us from. Keep that chat going. And with that, I'll hand it over to Gretchen to kick off the session today. Thanks, Lauren. And thank you all for attending today's event. For today's agenda, we'd like to start by discussing some of the common challenges we've seen across organizations making the move to Google Workspace. Next, we'll talk about how you can use data to help better understand your organization's current adoption and to identify ways you and your change management team can help to increase that adoption. Then, as Lauren mentioned, we have Omri here to demo how ActiveTrack can help your organization not only better understand your adoption of Google Workspace, but also the productivity, efficiency, and engagement of your entire workforce. After that, we'll share some of our recommended best practices to help you grow adoption of Google Workspace. And then we'll dive into some live Q&A covering questions from all of you across our community. Okay, let's dive right into some of the common adoption challenges organizations face when making the move to Google Workspace. In our team's experience, these are the most common challenges impacting Google Workspace adoption. And actually, prior to today's event, we surveyed all of you across the Google Workspace community and found many of you are facing these exact same challenges. First, user, users often struggle to work differently. Many features and capabilities within Google Workspace function different than other communication and collaboration tools. Oftentimes, users get stuck trying to find parity between Google Workspace and their legacy systems. And this can be really frustrating for your end users since many of these products are just fundamentally different. What do I mean by that? Well, for example, some legacy systems often are built around the concept of users organizing all of their information. No surprise, Google Workspace is based on the concept of searching information. So ensuring that your users understand these fundamental differences will play a big part in helping them to work differently. Another common challenge can be that the legacy system is still available, enabling users to continue working outside of Google Workspace. This can ultimately have a huge impact on your user's ability to discover and leverage key features of Google Workspace. Another example, we've seen some customers continue to allow their users to leverage their legacy systems for things like meeting notes. This really limits the opportunity for users to experience key note-taking features that are available in Google Docs, such as Smart Canvas, which gives users the ability to very quickly create meeting notes with a full list of attendees, or even assign projects tasks right there live during the meeting. The next big challenge, which may be impacting adoption in your organization, is just a lack of information or training. This can include everything from simply not understanding how to use the new tools, not understanding what features are available, or just not knowing where to go to get help. Another challenge can arise if your organization is currently leveraging multiple communication and collaboration platforms. Users may be unclear or not know how and when they should use Google Workspace tools versus other tools that may be available with similar capabilities. This is why it's always really important to see adoption challenges through the eyes of your end users. Have you given your users too many options? Lastly is a lack of value recognition. This can happen when your users don't really understand why your organization has made the move to Google Workspace 
in the beginning. Or more likely, that reason may not be relevant to them. For example, we all want to be more productive, more collaborative. But what does more productive actually mean to your organization? And more importantly, to your users. Okay, now that we understand some of the common adoption challenges, let's talk about how we can use data to help us mitigate these issues. First, let's take a quick look at some of the reporting resources you can use to better understand your organization's adoption of Google Workspace. Within the Google Workspace admin console, your admin team can pull some adoption relevant data such as total number of active users. In other words, how many users are actively using Google Workspace products? User activity by application. Which products are experiencing good versus poor adoption? Mobile device usage, content sharing, and even data storage volumes. For organizations with uh, Google Workspace Enterprise Plus licensing, you also have access to work insights. From here, you can visualize data such as product and adoption engagement, including seven day and 30 day active users, apps with high and or repeat usage, work patterns such as time spent in each app, time spent in meetings, collaboration activity and trends over time. So you can actually see how your organization's collaboration might be changing. And then work schedules to understand if users are frequently working outside of their normal working hours. Within Google Workspace products, the third reporting option available is through the BigQuery export. The BigQuery export can be turned on by your admin team to export your Google Workspace usage data directly into BigQuery. From there, you have a pretty customizable solution that will provide you the most comprehensive activity and usage data out of these three reporting options. You can also leverage Looker Studio to visualize that data. If your organization isn't using BigQuery today, the same data is also available via the reports API and can be exported to the database of your choice. Okay, so that's the three options available from Google, but you don't have to be limited to just those three. ActiveTrack can be a great third party solution to help you understand not only adoption, but also things like your individual users can get a better understanding of their own personal productivity. Your organization can gain broader insights to support business objectives such as hybrid work, workforce planning, employee well being, and more. It can even measure technology usage outside of Google Workspace if your organization is trying to reduce license costs of some of these platforms. And it has deep integration with Google Workspace products, allowing users to gain insights that help them identify opportunities for them to redesign their workday, protect that focus time, and ensure their overall well being. Omri from ActiveTrack will share more information in his upcoming demo. But before we get to that demo, I'd like to talk about the importance of combining quantitative data with qualitative data through the use of end user surveys. Quantitative data is definitely not the only data you should be analyzing to understand your current Google Workspace adoption success. In order to improve your users' experience and increase adoption, it's also very important to understand their current sentiment about Google Workspace. This type of qualitative data can be instrumental to developing a comprehensive strategy to increase, increase your Google Workspace adoption success. Surveys can also be a great way to collect information which may not be available in the reporting options. Okay, one last thing before I hand it over to Omri. I wanted to share a few example metrics that can help you gain a better understanding of your organization's Google Workspace adoption. First, you'll wanna start with the basics. What products are and are not being used across the organization? Which teams have heavy product usage versus which teams might have low product usage? Are key productivity and collaboration features even being leveraged? Okay, once you understand basic usage and activity data, then you can begin to expand your insights into areas like ROI. Have we been able to reduce license costs of other platforms? Have you been able to increase productivity of your teams? And finally, what about employee wellness? Are users frustrated by the move to Google Workspace? If so, why? And what can we do to better support them going forward?
These are just a few examples of key data points your organization should consider when trying to understand the success of your Google Workspace implementation. Defining what success look like, looks like will be a little bit different for every organization. So it's really important to take the time to not only define what success looks like for your organization, but also how you're gonna measure that success. Okay, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Omri so he can share with you how analytics from ActiveTrack can help your organization increase the success of your Google Workspace implementation. Thank you, Gretchen. I'm so glad to join our Google partners today to share with you how workforce analytics can help uh, together with the quantitative and qualitative insights that Gretchen was just sharing, help you in your Google Workspace adoption journey. First of all, ActiveTrack is a leading workforce analytics platform. We have uh, customers across many different industries, including sensitive fields like government, financial services, and healthcare. Um, we've been around for over a decade, uh, leading uh, organizations to make data-driven decisions using unbiased data. Let's talk about how we can impact productivity, efficiency, and engagement in your journey. I'm going to give you a little demo right now. For those who don't know about workforce analytics, we'll start there, kind of what is the general premise. We'll talk about some of the key business challenges uh, that our data helps solve. Then we'll deep dive into our technology usage analytics to help you understand how you can better affect an adoption, uh, uh, an efficient and complete adoption of Google Workspace. And lastly, how you can integrate and customize this data uh, within your general data warehousing strategy uh, for additional insights. This personal insights report is uh, hopefully will help you understand the basics of what we're covering here so we can talk about how to aggregate it up. Many of you might be in marketing, but even if you're not, you probably have a sense of how your marketing website um, just collects a bunch of click data from different uh, users as they're going through their journey on your site. And then a tool like Google Analytics helps you aggregate that to understand the trends, to understand where people are getting bottlenecked or leave your site or hopefully convert. In a similar way, ActiveTrack is able to collect very basic information about how people are using software on their device throughout the day and then aggregate it up. This view is a personal insights view so you can understand what kind of things we are trying to solve for individuals. First of all, we're helping them understand how they work, when they work, whether they're focused, whether they're achieving their goals, whether they're uh, spending a lot of time in particular software categories that may be on target or not on target, uh, where they work from more effectively. So there are location insights as well. Um, and lastly, things like what causes them to multitask, to switch context, whether they're taking uh, sufficient breaks, whether uh, working at certain hours leads to better focus time or not. This type of report, for example, is really scoped for an individual. Uh, I might share this with Javier on my team by just hitting subscribe and he'll receive uh, a PDF report uh, every day. But as we start to aggregate this up for the organization, and you can set your privacy settings so that you can only see, for example, uh, the aggregate metrics, we can see that some individuals are overutilized. And, uh, and we can also aggregate even higher at the organizational level to understand at a capacity planning level, whether we have sufficient coverage in areas, certain teams, certain individuals, or whether in fact some people are overutilized, maybe need more, more breaks um, and are at risk uh, for, uh, for burnout. Let's shift gears and talk about technology usage, which is the big one that we're here to solve. So when we look at all the applications, we're able to apply AI auto classification to see them in categories of activity. You can also see individual activities. And what you're really looking for is how is the adoption either changing, right? In this case, I want to see in the month of June, how did uh, adoption change month over month? Well, I see that there's a lot more project management usage, chat and messaging, over things like uh, productivity tools, Google Workspace, and developer tools. Well, that makes sense for our organization because we went into a lot of quarterly planning uh, during the month of June. And so those changes are expected um, and acknowledged, and we can move on. But if I really want to deep dive on particular applications, I might say, let's forget about this particular team. Let's look at anybody who is using a tool containing Excel. I want to find these stragglers who uh, who are having trouble adopting those those uh, corresponding technologies in Google Workspace. So I can come here, and instead of just seeing login information or people who accessed casually 
um, one application for maybe one minute. Uh, most tools that, that try to track usage just look at literally any amount of usage. I can see how much time they're spending. I can see which individuals are spending that time. I can see over this period of a month, I had 10 total unique active users, but 33 of them who were previously uh, users of this software have become inactive, which is what I'm hoping. We're trying to migrate them off and onto their new technology in Google Workspace. As I move ahead, other uh, problems that we help solve include hybrid work policy, right? Where are my teams actually working from most effectively? Uh, is it from remote locations? Is it from the office? Or is it a hybrid? You can see in our organization, we are mostly a remote team. And so when we come together once a week, we actually encourage more socializing. Um, we encourage people to have those uh, water cooler conversations that maybe they can't have when they're all digital. And so we have a market drop in, um, in, uh, in, in pro productive time overall for the team when we are in the office versus when we're working remotely. I can use this to make data-driven decisions. I can see at what time do people start working, uh, if we're getting the right coverage, depending on their location. And if we integrate with our Google Calendar, you can actually see how other meetings may uh, contribute to this. Maybe I'm not seeing the whole picture here because some of it's happening in co conference rooms. So this is how, how we help integrate these uh, different sources together. And lastly, help you do things like create scenarios here. So in this model, I had a before Google Workspace rollout. I had an after Google Workspace rollout. And I'm comparing these two segments. You can build segments based on time comparison, based on team comparison, technology usage, location, et cetera. And so I can see that after I began the Google Workspace migration, we're getting a lot more productive time out of our teams overall. On the other hand, we had a little bit more focus time previously. And if I start to dig in, I may realize that the teams are going from less focus time to more collaboration. And a follow-up conversation with the team might be, well, we're having to chat with each other a lot more to answer questions because these tools are new. And that's fine. That's part of uh, our migration process. So this is how you can use data, not necessarily to, as a crystal ball, but of course, to help guide coaching conversations with individuals. Let me show you how you can integrate this data. We are uh, completely deployed on the Google Cloud. Uh, everything you see here is developed uh, through a deep partnership uh, with both Google Workspace and Google Cloud. And so we took our regular technology usage reports that we just looked at, and we did a really custom deep dive comparing Google Workspace versus Microsoft Office usage so that we could tell a very specific story here. And we delivered this to one of our customers. This is a generic version with our data, of course. And I can see those 39 Workspace users versus the nine you know, remaining Office users. And I can see that trend. Is it kind of decreasing over time? You know, In our case, there's just a few teams that are using things like Microsoft Teams to talk with certain customers who only use that technology. So our usage isn't really changing over time per se, but I can also go in deeper and deeper and deeper to understand which individuals, how long are they spending, right? All these folks down here, it might shock me to see a report that I have as many as 30 people still using Microsoft Office, but if it's under five minutes each, I may not care, right? And this includes both the cloud versions and the desktop versions of all this software. I can see all the different variations. If you really want, you could even drill down to which specific spreadsheets they're opening up. So you can see if there's a problem migrating because of some uh, knowledge gap, help them make that transition and be able to stop double paying for those licenses that people aren't using anymore. So hopefully this gave you a little bit of a sense of how uh, we are able to take very basic information and using AI, using the Google Cloud Platform, be able to tell very compelling stories uh, and ultimately help you drive an effective migration onto Google Workspace. In summary, you can see some of the topics here that we covered um, include the adoption trends and how to have an effective migration, uh, but they also include technology usage in general, as Gretchen mentioned, to help you rationalize uh, licenses that aren't being used, to help do impact analysis, to maybe rationalize real estate costs, and lastly, to do capacity planning across your entire organization. Thanks, Omri. So before uh, we get into the Q&A, um, I definitely want to talk a little bit about a few things you can do um, today 
to help drive adoption success for Google Workspace at your organization. I think the most important thing for all of us to understand and acknowledge is that long-term adoption success is going to require an organized and ongoing effort. We cannot expect to simply deploy Google Workspace to users and have a successful adoption story. That's why the top recommendation here is to maintain a Google Workspace team. This may be made up of your early adopters or Google guides from the deployment, or it could be a totally new team that you establish after go live. Either way, having a team dedicated to promoting adoption of Google Workspace will be absolutely instrumental in helping to implement and execute your strategy for increasing adoption. And as we've already discussed, that strategy should include measuring and analyzing your product usage data and surveying those end users to understand their sentiment about Google Workspace. Beyond that, your internal workspace team can also help by driving communication around new features and maintaining a resource site where users can always find information, support, and resources. Your resource site can also be a great place to promote and deliver ongoing training opportunities such as new hire training, lunch and learns, or even transformation labs. I'll get back to those labs in a second. Just remember, training doesn't have to be delivered by experts and it doesn't have to be long and formal. You can leverage Google Champions across your organization to record short meet videos, sharing tips and tricks, and then post them to your resource site or share them in a Google Workspace community chat space. Okay, I mentioned transformation labs. If you're not familiar with this concept, Transformation Labs are a great way to work collaborative, collaboratively directly with your end users to identify opportunities for improving current business processes and then rapidly prototyping solutions using Google Workspace tools. Transformation Labs are a highly recommended best practice and can result in amazing success stories which you can share across your organization. If Transformation Labs are something you might be interested in learning more about or would like help uh, and support initiating, both our partners and our Google Cloud Consulting team can help. We'll be sure to provide more information on how you can get in touch with those teams after today's event. Okay, with that, I'm gonna hand it back to Lauren to talk about some resources we have available to help you in your journey to adoption success. And then I believe we'll be moving into that live Q&A. Amazing. Thank you both Gretchen and Omri for that presentation and demo. Thank you everyone for your questions and chat so far. Before we dive into the Q&A, um, and please keep the questions coming into the chat, we'll be sure to get to them. Um, here are just a few resources and next steps that we'd like to share with you as a reference. So again, we have the Google Workspace community and the link is in the YouTube description as a quick reference. This is where you can ask questions, engage with each other and Google Workspace team members uh, to get your questions answered, to learn tips and tricks, and to stay up to date on product updates and additional events. So we'd love to yeah. see you there if you're not already a part of it. That second link is our feedback form. So we'd love to hear your feedback about this session, any ideas or topics you have for future sessions. This is really valuable information and we'd love to hear from you to make sure that we're best meeting your needs and requests. So I'll drop the link into the chat shortly, but it'll just take you 30 seconds to a minute to complete that and we'd love to hear from you. Additionally, we have some upcoming Google Workspace events, one on understanding domain transfer on the 11th, and then another one focused on security on the 12th. But you can see all of our upcoming events and stay up to date with that third link there. Finally, we have um, an active track link. So that's just a quick link for you to learn more and learn how to get started with a free trial. So do explore, check that out and learn more about active track and what you saw today in today's demo. And then the last resource we have is a user training kit. So this is where you can help ramp up and guide your workspace users with additional training all in one, uh, one kit here. So we can drop that into the chat as well, but there's a short link for you to check that out. Love seeing that folks are interested in Transformation Labs in the chat. Thank you, Gretchen, for calling that out. We will be sure to share additional information. So if you did not officially or formally register for this event, please make sure you do so that we can follow up with you um, in that information to get you started on Transformation Labs. All right. 
So diving into our Q&A, we will definitely be sure to get to your questions in the chat, but we did have a few pre-submitted that we want to make sure we cover as well. So the first one here that we will call out is how do you overcome team member reluctance to change? Thanks, Lauren. Um, so really great question. I think the first thing that I want to call out that it's important to share the, the why your organization is, is moving to Google Workspace, right? And what's in it for me from, from an end user perspective? I think those are really important. So at an individual level, the uh, user knows, right, why you're making that change. Um, but I also want to call out that um, if we think about when you um, migrated to Google Workspace, you probably migrated all of your um, all of your data, which is great and super helpful for when um, you're onboarding users to the new solution. However, it does um, create a space where the user is managing their, their, their mailbox in exactly the same way. So I encourage you to identify opportunities to redefine how end users uh, manage their, their mailboxes. And an example of that could be as simple as um, implementing or showcasing concepts like um, inbox zero, right, which is a productive element of getting things done by David Allen. You can Google it to understand what it's like, but essentially it's managing your mailbox, uh, maybe only accessing it two or three times throughout the day and quickly processing your email and identifying action items or to-do list or things maybe that you're delegating to others um, that you might need to nudge at a later time or perhaps it's just um, things that you want to reference later. That's just a review item. So again, that's just one option, um, one opportunity that you can share with your organization on how they can manage their mailbox a little bit uh, differently. I also want to call out that it's super, super important to showcase success stories from um, both in individual end users and or teams on how they are using Google Workspace and how it maybe has made them a little bit more efficient or able to um, complete certain um, project items um, more quickly. Um, this makes it super relevant um, for individual users and also provides that aha moment, right? Can go on to the next question. Amazing. Thank you, Laura. So our next question is how to have conversations with Excel power users in terms of adopting Google Sheets. This is a good one. And I know a lot of times we see friction um, as we're moving from Excel to, um, to Sheets. Um, so first of all, I would recommend that um, you identify what is it that the end user is trying to accomplish. Um, more likely than not, it is an option within Google Sheets. It might be look a little bit differently, but trying to gather those additional details either through one-on-one -on -one conversations and or um, form submissions um, will help you identify um, how you can help your end users or teams. Um, something else I want to call out is that um, what we normally see is um, some, you know, difficulty with moving away from Excel macros to, um, to, to sheets and app scripts. So what I would recommend there is that the folks that actually created those those macros, um, upskill them, right? Make sure that they have the tools necessary, um, whether it's uh, maybe training availability, there's a lot of YouTube content out there that they can um, review and, and quickly um, get upskilled in how to build out app script. So um, again, highly recommend that um, that transition happens. Um, it also is important to maybe um, to prioritize what the most um, high business impacting uh, macros, right, would, would uh, be quick wins for you once you do establish um, that app script skill set in the organization. Great. Makes good sense. Thank you. Okay. 
couple more and then we'll flip over to some in the chat here. So Google's change management methodology for a number of years has been the four E's, excite, enable, expand, embed. Change management, however, has evolved a lot in the recent years. And as change management managers, we should always look at evolving and improving as well. With that said, I would like to know if there are any internal discussions within Google around using a different approach. And first of all, I just want to kudos whoever asked this question. We really appreciate your, your insights and information that you have um, here, and we really appreciate it as we're you know discussing internally, but I'll hand it over to the team um, for, your, for your insights here. Yeah, really, really great question. And that this has been a topic internally and in how do we modernize, right? Our customer success journey, which is our four E's. Um, and really um, the purpose of our four E's um, is to highlight those key activities identified as our customers are in um, move from sales to implementation to then operational steady state. And all of those activities and concepts come from um, Cotter, ProSci, and McKenzie change management framework. So we've taken a, taken a little bit of, of all of those different um, frameworks to, to help build out our methodology. Um, and just wanna highlight that um, our change management methodology does um, focus on sponsorship, org analysis, communication, and training um, that obviously is, is core and foundational, right, for any type of um, program that you're rolling out. So great question. Thanks. Yes, great. Makes sense. Okay, I think this is one more for Omri, but does ActiveTrack need an agent installed on the user computer in order to work? Great question. And wow, just an impressive amount of change man management knowledge that Laura and Gretchen have. Uh, really impressive. Yes, ActiveTrack's lightweight software is installed on every PC, Mac, and Chromebook, uh, as well as in your virtual desktop environments and terminal servers. Uh, organizations optionally can install our browser extensions um, and our Google Workspace add-on and deliver personal productivity reports to individual contributors right on their devices. Amazing. I think we'll keep that uh, rolling and ask a question about ActiveTrack as well. So does ActiveTrack require Enterprise Plus licensing? Great question. ActiveTrack is actually compatible with all uh, editions of Google Workspace, uh, as well as with all technologies, essentially. Uh, we can see both cloud and on-prem device uh, usage um, across the entire spectrum of your software usage. Fantastic. And then another question we have from the chat is, um, is this separate from Workspace Insights? Is there any additional clarification or information we can share around this? Yeah, Laura might actually uh, have a little bit more knowledge, but uh, yeah, Google Workspace includes Workspace Insights, which provides you some detail. Of course, it's all internal to Google Workspace usage, um, and it includes mostly what we call API-driven insights, so things like logins or when you submit a chat uh, or when you edit a document. It doesn't necessarily show you how long you're spending uh, or if you're doing other things that don't create a cloud transaction that gets logged somewhere. Um, so we help fill out. We work compatibly. And because we are deployed in Google Cloud and BigQuery, you're able to join those data sets very easily, like I showed you in that Google Looker Studio demo. Yeah. And just to add work insight, like to the primary difference um, in how work insights maybe um, provides data around um, Microsoft Office usage, is that we're looking at email mail flow on, and whether or not um, Microsoft attachments are um, and email, right? So that's how we're presenting the data, which is very different than what ActiveTrack can provide you. Great, thank you both. Okay, flipping back to some of those pre-submitted, again, keep the chat going. We'd love to hear any additional questions that you have. So one here is what effective communications and fun facts does Google recommend when it comes to introducing Google Workspace to users for the very first time? And I think we've touched on a couple of these pieces, but is there any um, additional elaboration that you can provide? 
Yeah, so um, again, definitely leverage the Google brand. Most of your end users uh, know Google, right? From like Google Maps or YouTube, Search and Gmail in their personal lives. So uh, definitely uh, leverage the, the brand and um, find out ways, right, to make it fun. Um, I, I was taking this very literal literal with regards to, you know, fun facts for Google. I, I highly recommend that you Google that. Um, but two that, that I really um, like is that, um, you know, Google search engine processes over 40,000 search queries per second. Um, and recall, you have the power of Google search in your mailbox. Um, and Google offers its search engine in over 100 languages. So I think those are uh, pretty cool um, fun facts, but just wanted, wanted to share that, um, you know, always, there's always new uh, features that, that we're launching. Um, you know, AI is huge right now. And um, just know that this has been um, core front and center for Google for quite some time with our introduction of features like suggested actions that happened, gosh, years ago, back in 2015 with Smart Compose formula suggestions. Um, and most recently with our introduction of Duet AI, um, write and rewrite in Gmail and Docs, which is currently in a trusted tester program. So just wanted to highlight that definitely leverage um, the Google brand, um, make it fun for your organization and um, yeah, if, if you're if this isn't the norm for you, uh, it's a great opportunity to maybe um, branch out a little bit and, and add some fun to um, your productivity and collaboration uh, uh, tips that you provide your your end users. Absolutely. I love that. If you have any fun ways that you've communicated the uh, change or have helped users adopt Google Workspace in your organization, please, we'd love to hear from you in the chat or in the community as well so others can benefit. All right, so our next question is, what are your best practices for long-term support of adoption or mastery of the core apps, such as for new hires or people who change roles and will be using Google Workspace in different ways? We've been using Google Workspace for five years now, but people across the organization are still confused by parts of Gmail and Drive. Yeah, that, this is a good one, and I and I what I would highly highly recommend, um, as Gretchen mentioned, as our best practice is to stay involved with your um, end user community and provide those um, tips and tricks, whether it's on a biweekly basis or monthly basis. Um, definitely keep your, um, hopefully you're using a Google site for resources for new hires that onboard um, for, for reviewing training materials, et cetera. Um, but we definitely encourage you to um, stay in touch with your end users at a minimum, let make them aware of new features, right? That we're launching. We're constantly launching um, features on a weekly basis. Um, a big shout out to the what's new um, calendar that you can review and subscribe to, to understand what's coming down, down the pipe. Um, also, again, you know, I cannot um, stress the importance of really showcasing success stories and, and bubbling them up right through your site resources for end users to review on how maybe one of their peers or another team in the organization has really transformed how they they work. So um, that's really the best um, way to um, keep uh, your organization um, aware of the capabilities that they have at their fingertips um, by showcasing right those tips and tricks and 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 any new features that that we may we may launch. And I'll just add to that, Laura, um, creating uh, community chat spaces where users can help answer one another's questions. I've seen that be highly successful with customers. So let your user community support your user community. Yeah, for sure. And and one one thing, right? It's like, um, I know what we do internally at, at Google, it's, you know, TIL, today I learned, right? And it's, you know, again, we, every single go live that I go to, I learned something new within, um, within the platform. And it's really because uh, we all manage um, our daily workflows differently. So whether that's in Gmail or Calendar or Drive and Editors, um, we all have a different workflow, right? So um, yeah, 
just sharing is super powerful. Awesome. I know we touched on a couple of things there, uh, Google Sites um, in particular. So we did have a couple questions that I think are good follow ons to what you just discussed. So one person mentioned, we successfully launched an internet for onboarding and change management via Google Sites. How can we relay or any best practices to relay product usage data into Google Sites and to further increase adoption? Yeah, so I think um, it's leveraging those those uh, options available, whether you're using Google admin reports and maybe you're going to surface that up within a Google site and, and show the organization how they're doing. Um, it might be super helpful if um, you've organized your OUs um, by region, let's say, for example, and you can show maybe adoption metrics and um, have some healthy competition across regions, maybe um, just a thought there. Um, but that's that's quickly what what comes to mind um, right now is um, depending on the tools that you have available to you, whether it's just out of the box admin console reports or maybe you're leveraging Act Active Track, right? Um, and you decide to move forward with um, with that solution, you can certainly um, surface up any dashboards that the tool provides you. Perfect. And uh, one other question around um, staying up to date on product updates. So we did uh, just mention the uh, Workspace product updates blog. So please uh, feel free to check that out and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, that is a great place to stay up to date and you can share that with your users as well if they're interested. Okay. Um, we're going to keep moving right along, but thank you for your questions and um, yeah, let us know. We have just a bit of time left, so we'll be sure to get to them. Okay. Are there any change management certifications or training available? <clears throat> so we, Google does not offer a change management certification and there's not one that that we endorse, um, but do recommend that if you have the opportunity to um, to receive a certification, um, like for example the ProSci certification, I would highly recommend it. Right, I think that that would be beneficial for you as an individual and and or your organization, um, so that you can stay up to speed with the the relevant um, change management um, methodologies. Right, um, that that can be helpful for you. Perfect. All right. Um, what success stories have you had with Google Workspace implementation in educational institutions? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, we're typically focused on enterprise customers, um, but I, I would recommend that you do a Google search for Google impact stories from across the globe. This should bring you to our edu.google.com um, uh, site, and we do um, surface up customer stories, um, success stories, um, and maybe we'll just drop that um, URL in the link so that you can go right to it um, in our chat session here. But yeah, great question. Thanks for asking that. Great. Yep. And that link is in the chat now, so feel free to check that out and explore. Okay. Our last question now um, that we have, but again, if you have any additional, the chat is still open. So this is our last one here is best practices moving from Outlook to Gmail. Um, yeah, this one, this one's a good one, right? Um, a lot of times when we first make the transition, the goal is to make Gmail look like Outlook as, as much as possible so that the user has the same look and feel. Um, and can transition a little bit more seamlessly. However, there are some um, really powerful options within your mailbox that you can implement. Um, one that I will call out is uh, multiple inbox. Um, recall I talked a little bit about that inbox zero um, concept um, where you can quickly flag a message as an action item um, with uh, with multiple inbox, you can set your action item label, um, set a view that's separate uh, within your mailbox so that you can essentially pause your mailbox, focus on all the AIs that you have to do for that day, right? And as soon as you're done with them, you just remove that AI label, 
right? Or whatever it is that you call that label. So that's just kind of one, uh, one tip, but just an example of how it's um, super important to try to get your end users to use the functionality within Gmail and completely change their workflow. Um, uh, multiple inbox that I just mentioned does um, does have a conflict with your preview mode. And a lot of times when we first transition a user from Outlook to Gmail, we advise them to turn on the preview mode because that's what they're used to. But again, if the, you know, if you start um, introducing and providing tips and tricks on how to work differently, I think that would be super powerful for your end users and something that I, I do highly recommend. Um, another thing, if I'm going to kind of pick on search again, once your end users are comfortable with um, searching in their inbox, they're going to quickly realize that they no longer need all of those labels that they have in their left nav bar, right? And it's super easy to hide those. Um, and maybe they're, um, they're only flagging messages on topics that, um, that are interesting that they want to use at a later time. And let me give you an example of this. Let's say you see an email come in and it's about a team building event and they mentioned a really cool icebreaker idea that you wanted to, that you would like to leverage at a future event. You might flag that as something, you know, let's say team building event label, um, because you know you'll get to it at, at another time. It's not necessary, but you may not know who sent it or what the actual icebreaker idea was, right? So just an example of, you know, maybe not necessarily needing to create labels for projects or customers or the way you were doing it in Outlook, um, but really redefining how you organize your mailbox um, because you have that trust and experience with, with the search capabilities that are available. So I hope that helps and kind of gives you um, some ideas of, of things that you can share with your end user community. Awesome. All right, well, that covers the uh, pre-submitted questions that we had, and there's just a few other questions um, and notes in the chat that I wanted to cover um, before we close out today. Um, so one question here is, is there a change management Google community that we can join? So I will actually take uh, this one on to say that um, not that I'm aware of, please team jump in, but there is of course the Google workspace community that we've been mentioning and we have specific labels on our events, on our blogs and in the Q and A forums around change management and adoption. So, um, that is a good way to, uh, have those conversations in the meantime. So again, that link is in, in the chat if you'd like to explore, but I'll open it up for the team. If you have any other, uh, insights or recommendations, um, that I might not be aware of. Yeah, I don't I don't think we have any, but hey, you know, if there's demand for it, maybe we should spin one up. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Sounds good. And then thank you, um, Brian. I'm seeing you just added a note about a potential um, you know, issue with uh, the product as it stands. So we will be sure to bring this back to the team. And I'd love if you could utilize the community as well to provide additional context there. That'll make it even easier for us to provide that feedback. Uh, is there any chance that Google will have signature format and templates? Maybe this is a better question for the community, just given um, the focus for the session is more around adoption and change management. Um, so please drop that into the community and we'll be sure to follow up with you um, with the right people to address your, your question, but really appreciate it. Um, okay, there are a couple other questions. Um, so last one here that I'm seeing is how have you approached search prompt training with other clients to perform an effective search is not something most people know how to do. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a super fair question. And, and product did, um, because of a lot of feedback that we received from customers, we did introduce, um, 
those search tip chips to help, right? Is it a calendar event? Does it have an attachment, et cetera? So this should, should help. Um, but I also want to call out that as you're working with end users and if there is a specific like search query, right? That's maybe complex and they run um, and you know, maybe you help them build it. Let's kind of give you that example. You help them build it. Um, I'm going to just remind everyone that everything within Google Workspace is a URL, right? So if it's, it is a complex search, you can just bookmark it within Chrome and then come back to it later. So again, I'm going to go, I'm going to use my inbox management, for example, if I'm working with a um, current um, customer, right? That, that, you know, a, a current project, um, I will, um, and if, I create action item labels, right? And if it's from a very particular, you know, a specific person, um, I like to do a search on that to make sure that I um, am responding to them quickly, right? So um, just an idea of, of how you can um, use search. The other thing that I realized that maybe it's not known by a lot of folks, um, especially those users that have recently switched from Outlook, everybody wants to sort by sender. Just know that you can do a right click on the message and you can say all messages from that user and it'll kind of put it in that sort um, view that the user is expecting to see. So just a tip, just in case you were unaware of that. Awesome. All right. Okay. Would you recommend for large enterprise deployments as time and situations permit to have on-site Google champion programs? Do you provide support or materials to partners or clients? Yeah. So again, I, I when I read this, I, I quickly think of Google Guides, right? Or um, uh, gurus, uh, your organization may call them differently, but it's the peer-to-peer -peer support. Highly, highly recommend that you create a group that can onboard um, to Google Workspace um, as an early adopter, right? So that they can provide um, support to the rest of the organization when you move everyone over. Now, it's super easy to keep that group engaged. And I highly encourage that for future rollouts. Maybe it's even a different project, not even having to do with Google Workspace, or maybe it's with regards to a new feature, or maybe you, for whatever reason, you're just launching a service like Google Sites. Maybe you decided to have it off, and then at a later time, you turn it on. Um, those Google guides or Google champions or gurus can help you as you're launching um, a new service. So I hope that answers your um, question, Gibson. Thank you for it. Awesome. Yeah, no, that's helpful. And uh, thank you for others jumping in to provide some of your, your uh, insights as well into that piece. Yeah, that's great. Well, uh, with that, um, if we did not get to your question or if you have any additional questions, uh, we'll say it again. The community is that place and that resource for you. So please utilize that. Um, and we'd love to hear and engage with you there. As a last piece, I will pull up our uh, resources slides so that you can um, have quick access to these. And again, lastly, we would love to hear from you in our feedback form. Um, and that link is here. If you have any insights, ideas for future topics, we'd really love to make sure we're honing in on what is of most interest to you. So thank you for taking the time to do that and for being with us today. Thank you, Gretchen, Omri, Laura, so much for the presentation, the demo, and answering so many of these questions. We really appreciate it. And I can say for myself that I've learned more than a few things. So thank you for your time. Um, before before we close out today, did you have any last uh, pieces of advice or words of wisdom to share with this group? Yeah, I'll jump in. Uh, there were a lot of questions about, um, you know, continuing to grow adoption. And I just want to reiterate, uh, you know, finding those champions or those ambassadors across your organization to help. Ongoing effort, long-term success is, is going to be based on that. So find those champions, whether they were your early adopters or your Google guides, or they're a totally new team who's really gotten enthusiastic about Google, find those folks to help you create resource sites, do meet videos, short tips and tricks, create, monitor that community chat space. 
there, there's really a, um, usually a very enthusiastic group of people who, who can probably help you evaluate your adoption and continue to expand it. So thank you guys all for joining. And it was, uh, it was really great pleasure to be here. So, and thank you, Lauren. Yeah. Thank you so much. Lauren. Yeah, this was a great event. Thanks everyone for spending the time with us. Yeah. And thank you for inviting me uh, to be able to join. <laughs> Uh, and, and help with your customer journeys. It was amazing having you. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope to see you next time. I hope everyone has a great rest of your day, evening, or wherever you are joining us in the world. And we really hope to see you next time. All right, thank you. Thank you, bye. Take bye. Care.